próximo miércoles uh -huh. y eh, pues es lo que les podría decir. Dale. Muchas gracias. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias, Salvador. Thank you very much, Sikyung La, for being here. It's an honor for us I to have you I said I don't here. want the translation because I know that he won't say bad things about <laughs> me. <laughs> no pedí que me tradujera porque sé que no va a hablar mal de mí. Just joking. <laughs> please, es un chiste. Please, please, please start. <laughs> no, we are, we are very honored to have you. Uh, Thank you. This for us, as you know, Casa Tibet is totally committed to the Tibetan people and the Tibetan cause. And, and we are all, I think, very thankful for, for what we have received from your culture and your people. And it's an honor for us to have you and support you in any way we can. Le, you. Le digo al I think we should thank His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Uh, we always try to look at the good side out of bad things. Of course, we lost our country. It was very bad for us. But because we lost our country, the world gained the Dalai Lama. If Tibet had been independent, then I don't know where the Dalai Lama would be somewhere in the Potala Palace and some maybe not accessible to everybody. And his message of peace and nonviolence, the Buddha's teachings, would not have spread as much as it did. And I wa also want to thank uh, Lama Tony for many years of his hard work and uh, it shows in these physical structures that he has and the number of disciples that are increasing every time and the number of centers also increasing all the time. Now I understand that he is in Cancun for consecration of a new project. So all these boards very well. No, I forgot to expend, extend my warm welcome from, <laughs> warm <laughs> greetings from Taramsala. But this is my first visit to Mexico and to Latin America, uh, South America. So we were in Brazil for two days and then two days in Colombia. And now five days uh, here in Mexico. Then I'll go to United States and Canada before I go back to India during this visit. So I'm very happy to meet all of you and I look forward to meeting you again in future. And today's topic is uh, uh, about reincarnation of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and uh, the impact of uh, politics in this. So I'm not a religious teacher. Please understand that. I think you are much more better in Tibetan Buddhism than I am. <laughs> I was never a monk. I didn't study the scriptures, but I only listened to His Holiness many times. So whatever I know is because of His Holiness teachings. So when we talk about reincarnation of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and its implication on religious freedom in Tibet, then uh, I think we don't need to go many decades back maybe start from the reincarnation of Panchen Lama, the, uh, of the 10th Panchen Lama. You know that the 10th Panchen Lama died in 1989 in Shigase. And I met several people who say that he didn't die a natural death. Of course, at that time, um, maybe he had some sickness. He was overweight. He was very hefty. Uh, all those were there, but the signs on his nails and all that mm -hmm. uh, points to the, f to, to the uh, suspicion that he may have been poisoned by the Chinese authorities. Because just before his death, he spoke very uh, uh, straightforward about some of the Chinese policies in Tibet. And then by 1995, uh, before 1995, when the names of the potential candidates came up, uh, China wanted to show the world that they are following the traditions of uh, looking for reincarnation. So they formed a search committee led by Chade Rinpoche. By? Chade Rinpoche. Chade. From uh, Tashilumbu Monastery. Mm. So Chade Rinpoche is a Tibetan Lama, and he knows that it is more important for him 
to get permission from His Holiness the Dalai Lama rather than the Communist Party, even though he was appointed by the Communist Party as a search uh, leader of the search party. So he secretly sent a list of potential candidates to His Holiness the Dalai Lama in Dharamsala uh, before this whole process began. This is my chal, colgado justo en la esquina de acá, sí. Gracias. <laughs> de este lado está, eh. Gracias. Sorry. Just a little cold. <laughs> Then your brain also starts freezing. Exactly. Then neurons don't fire so well. Chinese government was furious. Yeah. They were very unhappy. Y el enfureció el gobierno chino, verdad? Estaban muy muy descontentos del hecho. And uh, they decided to choose their own boy, and uh, what they call is the golden urn. On that material, on that also you can read more uh, documents. There are written documents about how the golden urn came into being. This was in 1793 during the uh, Manchu period, the Qing dynasty. So one of the witnesses uh, when Chinese did this selection was Arya Rinpoche, who was a former abbot of the Kumbh Monastery, Arya Rinpoche. Agya Rinpoche, yeah. mm -hmm. of the Gunpo Monastery. He was the uh, former abbot of uh, Kumbu Monastery, and he was also vice president of the Chinese Buddhist Association. So after they selected the boy, on the way back to China, the Chinese leader who was with Agya Rinpoche mm -hmm. told Agya Rinpoche that they put a small cotton under the boy that they want to choose. Mm. So you have the potential three candidates name in the golden urn, mm -hmm. and one is little bit above the others. I get much tape the Ming Cheng Dui. So after mm, later, I get much also fled Tibet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he came to United States. Mm -hmm. Uh, alguien Rinpoche luego huyó de Tibet, ¿no? Llegó a los Estados Unidos. Mm -hmm. And uh, after coming into exile, he wrote his book uh, about his experience and about the selection of the Panchen Lama, how Chinese government manipulated uh, the choosing of the boy that they wanted. So you can understand that by that time, Chinese government had realized that the importance of selecting their own Panchen Lama. O sea, de ellos elegir al Panchen Lama. Survival of the dragon. Survival of the dragon. Survival of the? Dragon. Se llama Survival of the Dragon, el libro, la sobrevivencia. Surviving the dragon. That's why there's something wrong with the English, Survival of the dragon. Es sobreviviendo al dragón. No? Surviving the dragon. The dragon. So Entonces if you find time, you can read that book as to how there are details about how China manipulated that process. Yeah. For the Chinese communist leaders uh, who doesn't understand the nitty gritties, uh, the rituals of selection of reincarnation, for them it's very easy to say that Dalai Lamas are chosen by the Panchen Lamas and Panchen Lamas are chosen by the Dalai Lamas. It's not as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So, um, After His Holiness announced the name from India, the boy vanished with his family. Uh, we still don't know where he is or whether he is alive or not. There have been uh, several requests from international organizations, including the United Nations Human Rights Commission, uh, to ask China about the whereabouts of Panchen Lama for many years. In those days, they used to say he's studying and he's well and he doesn't want to be disturbed. Y en aquellos tiempos, lo que el gobierno chino decía era, está estudiando, está bien, nadie quiere, no quiere que se le moleste. So even now, they say he's fine, he doesn't want to be disturbed. Y aún hoy siguen diciendo esto, ¿no? Él está todo va, está muy bien, nomás no quiere que lo moleste. So we don't know whether he's alive or not, if he's alive, where he is. And it's for sure that he would not have been given the traditional education to carry on his responsibilities in future, even if he gets the opportunity to, to be released. Last year, I was speaking at the National Endowment for Democracy in the United States. They organized a talk. And I mentioned that China made a very, very strategic mistake 
but by not recognizing the same boy that His Holiness recognized. So if they had recognized the same boy that His Holiness had recognized, they would still have their hold on the boy because the boy would not have been able to flee Tibet. It will be the same boy and that boy would be respected by the Tibetans also mm -hmm. because he's recognized by His Holiness. Mm -hmm. Now they have their own selected boy and that boy is not recognized or not respected by the Tibetans inside Tibet. So even today, if you go to Tibet, the Tibetans show their displeasure by not selling the picture of Chinese selected Panchen Lama. And they cannot sell picture of Dalai Lama's Panchen Lama. So they sell picture only of the 10th Panchen Lama. So in the traditional Tibetan system, even the Chinese Panchen Lama should be staying in Shigatse in Tashitombo Monastery, not in Beijing for his traditional education. Claro. Y si, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> y en la, en la tradición, en el, el sistema tradicional tibetano, el Panchen Lama, inclusive el Panchen Lama elegido por los chinos, tendría que haberse quedado en Shigatse, el monasterio de Tashilumpo, y no vivir en Beijing, donde vive hoy el Panchen Lama chino. Is it too boring or too much detail? Es mucho okay. detalle, está aburrido esto. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, China, even now, even this year, May, they sent Chinese Panchen Lama to Tibet. And earlier also they sent several times. But he doesn't live in Tibet. Tibet. The first few times, the Chinese government had to pay the Tibetan people to go and listen to the Chinese Panchen mm -hmm. Lama. Las primeras veces el gobierno chino tuvo que pagarle a los tibetanos para que fueran a escuchar al, al, al Panchen Lama chino. And this year, when he was coming from Kanze, from mm -hmm. Eastern Tibet, they gave 100 yuan each to Tibetans just to receive the Panchen Lama at the airport or on the road. De cualquier estado local. And when he reached uh, Central Tibet, they started paying 200 yuan mm -hmm. just to receive him. Y ya cuando, conforme se acercaba a, a Tibet Central, entonces empezaron a pagar 200 yuanes solo para que fuese la gente a recibirlo. So the Chinese government is trying very hard to gain some credibility for their Panchen Lama in Tibet. Last year, we got some intelligence uh, information from some intelligence agencies that they are trying to send him to Nepal in Lumini. Mm -hmm. And we complained to the authorities and we managed to stop that. Entonces nos quejamos con las autoridades y logramos detener ese viaje. So now, what other choices does China have? Because maybe they'll send him to Mongolia because they can put pressure on Mongolia. Mongolia is sandwiched between China and Russia. Mm. Cerebro está en otra yeah. década. <laughs> so there is neither recognition from the international community nor respect from the Tibetan people. But Chinese government is really serious about this issue, uh, the issue of reincarnation. So they developed this uh, law called Order Number no. Five in 2007, and the law says that the Communist Party should be the final authority to recognize reincarnated lamas, or what they call as living Buddhas. So when this law was passed, uh, you know His Holiness the Dalai Lama always says in a very humorous response to this, he said, first, if the Chinese leaders are really serious about reincarnation, first they should study Tibetan Buddhism <laughs> to understand the concept of reincarnation. <laughs> and His Holiness, at, at that time when His Holiness said, Chiang Zemin, the president of China, was still alive. So His Holiness said, if Chinese government is really serious, they should look for Mao Zedong's reincarnation <laughs> first, <laughs> Ting Xiaoping's reincarnation second. Después la de Ting Xiaoping. <laughs> then maybe the Dalai Lama. Y después quizás la del Dalai Lama. <laughs> so you, you know uh, <laughs> how His Holiness <laughs> mind works. He always answers in very humorous and full of wisdom. So the Chinese government is more concerned about the yet to come 15 Dalai Lama than the living 14 Dalai Lama. When Speaker Pelosi of the uh, United States House of Representatives went to Tibet in 2015, 
So one of the topic that kept coming again and again was reincarnation of His Holiness. So China is really serious about using the Chinese Panchen Lama for the selection of the next Dalai Lama. So as I mentioned before, they are making series of efforts. They have the law now, order number five, and they try to increase the visibility of Chinese Panchen Lama in Tibet, just to tell the international community that Tibetans inside respect Chinese Panchen Lama. And today, uh, as we speak, uh, there are a lot of educational camps being organized at various levels in the Tibetan community inside Tibet to speak about the reincarnation and the law. Uh, in exile, uh, with regards to His Holiness reincarnation, there is only one document that is of September 2011. From the, office, from the private office of His Holiness. Yes, it's a document of the private office of His Holiness. Now, this document says that uh, when His Holiness <coughs> reaches the age of 90, then he will consult and take certain decisions. Now, it's a little less than two years from now. Y eso implica en dos años, menos de dos años. So maybe by 2025, July 6, His Holiness might make some pronouncements. And if he feels healthy, he might say it's too early even now. So who knows? Now, these days, I go travel around the world and meet with foreign officers and leaders from different countries. And they keep asking me this question about His Holiness and His Holiness reincarnation. So one very high politician uh, administrator uh, asked me, told me, you don't seem to have a process in place right now. And I told him, this is your perspective. Yo lo que le dije, esa es tu perspectiva. Uh, Tibetans and some of China experts in India feel that His Holiness has taken a very wise decision not to talk about a final decision. Because China cannot handle unpredictability. Que algo que no logra yeah. China, le cuesta un montón a China, es lo impredecible. Because even President Trump was very unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> Por ejemplo, el presidente Trump era muy impredecible. And China could not handle him. Y China no sabía qué hacer con él. I was once in Thailand and I read the local newspaper that was when U.S.-China trade war was going on and President Trump was there. And I read in a Thailand newspaper, newspaper in Thailand, saying that Chinese are referring to oracles <laughs> to see what, <laughs> what decision Trump is going to take next. <laughs> because His Holiness has said this could be the last Dalai Lama also. Or Khasa uh, Shambhati, Mandi Trugudila, Ah. Karetulko. Emanation. Ah. O podría haber una emanación. Uh, to appoint somebody before the demise of the present Dalai And Lama. when the media asks His Holiness uh, whether uh, the next Dalai Lama could be a woman, His Holiness says, why not? Y cuando los medios le dicen, oye, el siguiente Dalai Lama podría ser mujer, y el, su santidad responde, ¿y por qué no? So Chinese are very confused. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Eso confunde mucho a los chinos. <laughs> they don't know what to do. No saben qué hacer. So uh, let us see. We have to wait for another two years. And uh, I think it will be good on your part as a, a follower of Tibetan Buddhism if you can pass a resolution in Casa Tibet or the followers saying that his Holiness the Dalai Lama and His Holiness alone will be responsible for His reincarnation. Because what, what or who, to whom it matters is the followers. Porque ustedes son, digamos, seguidores del Dalai Lama, ¿no? O sea, ¿quién le importa esto? Pues a los seguidores del Dalai Lama. To share the name. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is uh, China's plan as of now, because if, if His Holiness decides now, it will make it very easy for China, because they have 
both human resources and financial resources to spread their propaganda around the world. So as of today, politically, the United States is the only government that has a law on Tibet. It's called the U.S.-Tibet Policy 2002. So as of today, politically, the United States is the only government that has a law on Tibet. It's called the U.S.-Tibet Policy 2002. And there are many backgrounds to this. I won't go into the details of the free trade agreement between the United States and China, and China being part of the World Trade Organization during Clinton's time in 2000, 2001. So this was one of the outcome uh, of that process to have a law on Tibet. This uh, law was amended in 2020, so now it is called Tibet Support and Policy Act 2020. So in the, amen <coughs> in the amendment, the main issue was about the reincarnation of His Holiness. Now the Japanese Buddhist Association also have passed a resolution that His Holiness alone is responsible for his reincarnation. Yeah. The Indian Buddhist Association have also passed a similar resolution. So I think it will help if there are more Buddhist associations around the world who pass similar resolutions. And then you can send a copy to us, to our religion and culture department. And then we can compile all these resolutions and make a presentation to His Holiness when His Holiness reaches the age of 90. And uh, regarding His Holiness reincarnation, there have been some consistent statement from His Holiness over many years. His Holiness has repeated this statement many times that he, that says that since 1969, he has been saying that whether there should be a next Dalai Lama or not will be decided by the six million Tibetan people. But if we have to organize a referendum amongst the Tibetans alone, then other Buddhist followers get angry with us. <laughs> so it's better for every Buddhist group to pass resolutions. Another consistent statement of His Holiness has been uh, that uh, he will be born only in a free world. So if Tibet is not free by that time, then he will not be born in Tibet. And lately His Holiness says that if I get to go to China and Tibet, I will go. I will visit, but I will not stay there because there is no freedom. I'll come back to India. And His Holiness says, I don't want to die with Chinese near my bed. I want to die with Indian friends on my bedside. So these are all some signals from His Holiness. And when the time comes, right, even now you must have heard His Holiness say many times that I will live for two decades and more or I will live up to 110, 13 years of age. But there are propitious pre-signed that this Dalai Lama will live very long. Now I tell my people, the Tibetan people, it is not only up to His Holiness decision mm -hmm. to live long. We have to follow His Holiness teachings and only then His Holiness will live long. If He lives long and we do exactly opposite of what He preaches, <laughs> then it doesn't make sense for him to live long. So I think the message is also for the Chinese leaders because they are waiting for this Dalai Lama to die so that they can choose another Dalai so Lama. So I tell my Chinese friends, and I also send the same message to the Chinese government, let us see whether Dalai Lama outlives the Communist Party or the Communist mm -hmm. Party outlives His Holiness the Dalai Lama. By that time, even Xi Jinping won't be alive. Then I also tell them, do you want a lifelong headache or not? And have you not learned any enough lesson from the Panchen Lama saga? So even if it comes to a time when China chooses one and the Tibetan chooses one, they will have to work very hard to get respect from the Tibetan people and from the international community. So it's not the same as people protesting and you send police and army to quell them off. And it's not just like one off event. So if you have two Dalai Lamas and China keeps playing politics with it, it is going to be lifelong. And I don't know Xi Jinping where he will be in some other world, I don't know. So this also impacts the larger question about religious freedom in Tibet. Okay. Maybe briefly I'll say, okay, the number of monks and nuns have come down drastically where we used to have thousands of monks, now 400, 500, except for 
institutions like Larungar, which came up later and now mm -hmm. destroyed. Mm. Mm, the management of the monasteries, which used to be handled by monks and nuns, have now been taken over by the United Front Work Department, uh, the security agencies, the intelligence agencies, so monks and nuns are no more responsible for the management. So if you want to become a monk uh, in a certain monastery, you need three other people to guarantee for you. So if you take up a political activity, three others are going to suffer with you. And for monks and nuns to move from one place to another place in Tibet, they need at least four or five different permits to travel. Now, communist government wants to be responsible for setting up curriculums in the monastery, Buddhist curriculums. Now they call it Buddhism with Chinese characteristics. Nobody knows exactly what that means because Chinese laws are always very ambiguous. Everything in the name of social stability and national security, they can do anything. So this reincarnation is the last attempt by, his, uh, by the Chinese government. So let us see when the time comes who is able to maneuver whom and how situations will evolve. But we have to be prepared. So it's not only with His Holiness reincarnation, but reincarnation of all other lamas in Tibet. So if you want to become a new lama, you can pay some Chinese officials and become a lama. <laughs> okay, I'll stop here. Mm -hmm. Thank Let you very much. I know only so much. Eso es todo lo que yo sé. Any questions? Tienen preguntas? Was it useful? Le sirvió esto? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Please. Mike. 